Okay, now, talking about pinging and trace routing. Now, look at what we did on the screen. Just look at well, look at what we did on the, on the screen. We have, um, we pinged, remember what's pinged www.google.com? It sends, it sends packets to the to Google server, but then there was no return packets, right? So it told us, um, 100 packets sent, zero received, 100% packets lost. Like it sent packets to the server, but it didn't return any, like they didn't communicate. So we now try trace route www.google.com. So what does it do? Sorry. Now, it's actually used to track the, the path. Let's say, let's say the pathway. Let's say the pathway that, not let's say, actually, the pathway that the, the packets actually take from our own computer. This is our computer here. The computer that is used to send, send the packets to the server that is hosting www.google.com. What do I mean by what I've just said? It basically helps us to identify the routes and also measure the transit delays. Let's say if there are delays of packets across the internet protocol network. I don't know if that um, is making any sense. Okay, let me even explain further. Now, what does this command first of all do? The, the command will first of all resolve this host name this www.google.com that you can see on the screen. If I will resolve the host name to, what, to the corresponding IP address, look at what it's doing. Trace route to www.google.com. There's an IP address here 30 ops max, 60 bytes, 60 bytes, sorry, 60 bytes packets. Now you can see it has, it has actually resolved it to this IP addresses that we have here. So there's actually something they call TTL, something they call time to live. I'm just trying to like ensure that the explanation is not too um, ambiguous. So it's something they call TTL values. TTL is like a field in the IP header that limits the lifetime of a packet. So let's talk about the let's 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 leave the the this thing. Um now it has told us the Various parts that this packet has gone through. Is it showing me? Do, 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 do. Anyways, that's that on that. Now, let's. I'm still surprised why this ping is not giving us results. It's meant to give us results. It's meant to send. Oh, sorry, mistake. It's still not it's still not replying us. Anyways, that's that on that. It's not going to uh, be much of a problem. So that's we are going to exit control C, stop this process. So we clear it out. Now it's clear. So now we are going to I'll show you one two they call nmap. I'll just give like a surface um level kind of stuff about it. Nmap. So let's use nmap. Let's say we want to use nmap to just check this website. Look at this website. Scan me the nmap. Oh, it's just like a website. The way we can use nmap to check any. We can nmap is basically for port analysis, right? We say we are like remember the explanation I gave earlier on. You want to know the different ports that are or the different services that are running. Let's start with ports first before we enhance the capability of nmap. Let's just start with ports. Want to know the different? Want to know the different? This thing that is like running or that are running on a system. Just use nmap, then use the, the address, www.lessyfacebook.com. But please don't, don't scan or test any websites without legal permission. It's actually illegal. So let's press enter for this. Let's see if this is going to bring out for us. When we're talking about nmap in details, that's tomorrow. I'll tell you the different parameters, flags, and likes of them that we can use with nmap. Just, but just for now, just see what port analysis is. 
let's say this is the website that they've hired Mr. Musa to come and to come and pen test. This is the first thing is actually meant to do to what, perform reconnaissance to get information about what the website. So this is him is gathering information about the web. No, don't call it the website. Just call it a system. You get call it a system. So from the system, we can now tell the different information. From different information, we can now tell what exactly this thing is. So we wait for it to load. So while it is loading, let me show you another very important tool that is called Wireshark. You come here. Man, this thing is taking time. So you come here, you load up your Wireshark. I have my Wireshark loaded up. So I'm going to change the screen. Please watch, be very, very careful while you watch here. You see things that are very strange, although tomorrow we'll talk about it in detail. So it has already brought out the result. It has brought out the result. Okay, let's quickly go back there before we'll go to our wire shot. Now look at this result. So what is it telling us? It said, let's let's read it step by step. MAP scan reports for scamming, blah 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 blah. This is the IP address. Host is up. Other address for scamming or the best not shown. 994. Why are you bringing this one? Oh god. So 994 filtered TCP ports, no response. Now look at the ports that are actually open. Port 21, 22, 85. What is all this? Just one minute. Okay, that's it. Look at the ports that are open. 21. 2280, 5879929, and this, they are all open. Look at the services running FTP, SSH, HTTP, and likes of them. Now, from here, some of you will be like, ah, what's the essence of all these ones? From this, now you can now tell from this port 80, you can now tell that this was this scammy.mmap.org as a website. What it means is that we can press HTTP colon slash slash. Let's go there. From the from the mmap scan, you can see that it told us that it has what? Is 80 is running what HTTP. So we can now go here. This is our browser. This is our browser. So your car has a browser. So you can easily go there and let's see from what it has said if truly it has like HTTP, if truly it's running a web service. While this one is taking time, let's use our normal browser. Please. Let's take note of this scanme.nmap.org. Remember, it's HTTP. So let's go to our normal browser. So, according to our MAP results, we're able to see. Please, can you? Um, just want to be sure my laptop is beginning to it's a problem. So now let's check here. HTTP colon slash slash scan me dot nmap dot org then slash, we press enter. Let's see what it brings out for us. Can you see? So truly, truly has brought out what? It has brought out what? It has brought out this web. So from here, you can actually tell that is that is running, is running, um, running http that's running a web service so we can always do more things from there now let's look at another very beautiful tool you like it Two moment, please. Mm 
good. So now you have um, Wireshark on the screen tomorrow. Like I said, we'll explain it more. We'll give more, like we'll give like more elaborate explanation. But you can see different tra traffic. From Wi-Fi two, we have traffic. From my VMware network adapter, we have traffic. VMware network adapter, VMNet one, we have traffic. Then adapter for loop, forget about this one. Traffic is not really much of this one. So our major area of this thing is going to be. Let's look at. Wi-Fi. So before I click on Wi-Fi 2, can someone tell me a protocol that I'm going to see here? One protocol that like there's I've talked about it. I just want to actually pay attention. Can someone tell me a protocol that I should see in that Wi-Fi 2? Anybody? I'm sure you know the different things I'm running on my PC. You know the different things, but I'm not going to say much on that. But just someone should tell me a protocol that I must find there. Anybody? Okay. And yeah, sorry. Udo. Udo, please, please stop. Let me hear from you. Udo. You're not saying anything now. You raised up your hand that you want to talk. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Is, is the IPD is the IPD address of the uh, of the Wi-Fi two that is going to appear as the protocol for that? Uh, no, no. Okay. Actually, when I mean protocol, I mean um like. Like, I don't want to say anything. I need, let, let me hear from another person. I, I don't want to say the answer, that's why. Um, Mr. Okay, Ilega. Good afternoon, everyone. I think you will see the, you see the transport layer protocols. They are supposed to be there and the application layer transport protocols. Layer. Yes, and the application layer. Because I'm you are on transport layer. Yes. Is there give me a name for it? There's a name for it. I know what you're talking about, but give okay. me a name for it. Okay, okay. The user diagram protocol and the transmission control protocol. Thank you. You will see UDP, you see TCP. Why are you going to see UDP? Let me let me let me ask you if you know that. Why are you going to see UDP? Uh, I would say because it, it, that is it's going to show you your diagram, like the user. You are the user, like the applications using your network. Let me use that word. Mm, then, I'm not really comfortable with that. Okay. okay, go to TCP. Why are we going to see TCP? Why are we going to see TCP then? Okay, because you are, let me say, you are sending requests, like making use, sending different requests. That explain it in a, say it in a way that someone that does not know about computer will understand. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, okay, because you are making use of your system, so normally as you are using it, like sending information, so like you are sending information on the system or on the internet. Okay, yes. That makes sense. I was thinking you're going to talk about the. I was thinking you're going to talk about the bubble that I use. Yeah, you correct. Okay, thank the you. TCP you talked about UDP is also correct. Thank you very much. Um. Okay, it's correct. Is is correct. It's done a very nice job. Now let's go and check. Now these guys have already captured a lot of packets. They've captured packets. That's Wi-Fi too. I'm using Wi-Fi. So let's click on this power. It's going to take us there. Click on it now. Good. Now, yeah, so we have this. Now you can see that Mr. Ilega is correct. You see, it's capturing a lot of packets. So we have, you can see UDP. So let's say, let's quickly filter TCP out. 
Don't worry, I'll teach you about this thing tomorrow. Let us filter TCP out. Let's see the TCP. Can you see different TCP requests that we have? TCP request. Now let's do UDP. He didn't talk about the fact that I'm having a video call with you guys. That's where you see a lot of UDP requests. You can see UDP, UDP, UDP. You can see a lot of UDP requests, right? You can see UDP requests. It still keep it keep capturing, it keeps capturing. It's capturing from 172.20 to what? Let me just pick one. Let me pick one. Let me pick one up. Ah shit, this thing keeps capturing. Let's stop. Stop. I've stopped. So let me just pick one. Have you seen? 172.20.10.2. Who has this IP? Let's go and check our C, our CMD, if we are the owner of that IP. So I'm going to CMD right now. CMD is my terminal. As a lab of so my my this thing has loaded. So I'm going to press that my IP config to see if truly I am the one. Wow. Share the entire screen so that we can see everything that is going on. So he's actually showing us this stuff. This thing is taking time. It's meant to bring everything out immediately. I just wanted to bring the IP address. They were not going to compare it with what we have in Wireshark. Why we wait for it to load? I'm going to create a Now look at the wireless LAN, look at the address, 172.20.10.2. Have you seen, this is our business, this one, IPv4 address of this wireless LAN, 172.20.10.2. Let's now go back to Wireshark and see what Wireshark is actually showing us. Now, Wireshark has, Have you seen that we have 172.20.10.2? Have you seen? So you can see that is the one, that we are the one actually doing this UDP. And that's because of the video call I'm making. So you can see how these guys can be used to analyze packets. Now let's follow a particular packet and see if we can get the information that is there. We can't actually get. Anyways, tomorrow we'll, we'll treat, like I said, we'll treat this in details, more details. So if we come here, let's pick a particular one. Let's pick this one. Let's follow it. We follow, follow to UDP stream. I know what you're saying, you're not really familiar with it. So I'm currently looking at something. I'm sure that thing is not displaying because it's different windows. It's just encrypted information. So I close it. So tomorrow we'll talk about it more in details. So that's that about that. Yeah. Now, lastly, let me show you a very interesting tool, Cisco Packet Tracer, where you can identify different connections or interconnections between. Where is it again? Where is it? 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 Where
I've told you guys severally that if you have the concept of using your phone, the triac me I just brought is just to help you at least just help you to at least follow up in a way. But I am when I am very, very obstinate at the very beginning about the usage of phone, how it is being disallowed. I know what I'm actually saying. Imagine the the just in this class alone, I've mentioned three tools, just three. And as we proceed or as we progress, you see see more tools that I'll keep on bring you on. And the point for you can be good in cyber security. Before you can be good in cyber security, you need to know how to use all these tools properly. So let's share the screen. Let's quickly look at look at um this. So these are Cisco packet tracer. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's just quickly play with it. We're not going to deal with it much. So, let's just quickly interconnect some at end devices that we have. End devices that we have. We have, let's, let's bring a laptop. We put it here. We bring um, server, we put it here. We bring a PC, we put it here. We bring, what is, what is, what is? A printer, let's say this is like an office, we put it here. Then that should be all, any other thing. Yeah. So we want to interconnect them. So we bring, Uh, we choose this one. To use this one too, you have to like, you can learn how to use this one. There's no problem about it. We connect our PC to the server for no available ports. All right. So we delete this server. Delete. So instead, let's use like a router or a switch. Let's use a switch. Let's use a router. Let's use 365. Let's use this one. 3650. We'll put it here. So multi-layer switch. So we connect connect our laptop to this. Try to exemplify a network, what it means or what it looks like. Put it here. So now in a nutshell, in a nutshell, forget about these red lines. It's actually meant to be green. Green means it's now it's working. In a nutshell, I'm coming, please. We go back to end devices. We bring another another laptop. We put it here. So let's now interconnect them. So what it means is that. This one can communicate with this laptop, can communicate with this laptop. This PC can communicate with the laptop. This laptop can communicate with this printer via what this switch is going to, the information is going to route through here, then to here. So the network that you see in normal, normal offices, everything can be shown here. The logical, the logical uh, representation can be shown here. Then it's not going to be practice or done out there. Yeah. So that will be that on that. Now, tomorrow, here's what we're going to do, real practical. So if you want to follow along, so you do as I'm doing it, although I'm going to be like a bit fast, but I know you can be fast as well. You just like you need to have like your PC up and running with you. 